welcome to part two of Home Cured Bacon. In the last episode, we looked at how to make a cure according to how you want your bacon to taste and how you want to preserve it. Today, we're going to look at the curing process and the meat. And in the last two episodes, we'll take a look at smoking meat and cutting and packing meat. Before we go any further today, I just want to say, if you want great bacon, You've got to start with great pork. We get our pork from the decent company, from a lovely lady called Martha Roberts. Let's take a quick look at how her pigs live. Isn't that fantastic? That's how animals should be raised. Those pigs are as happy as a pig in a Welsh hillside. There's two kinds of bacon. There's what we call back bacon. The Americans call that Canadian bacon. And that comes from a cut called the loin of pork. And then there's what we call streaky bacon, or what the colonials call bacon. And that comes from pork belly. We like both. And the process for curing them is much the same. Today, Martha has sent us a wonderful loin of pork. So let's nip into the kitchen, have a look at the meat, and understand the curing process. So this is our loin of pork. And this is used to make back bacon. Martha is kind enough to send me a complete loin so that I can cure it and cut it in any way that I see fit. And if we turn this over, And if you look very carefully, you can see there is a clean line there, about a quarter of an inch, and that's the skin. That forms rind on bacon. Some people prefer their bacon rindless, and if that's the case, take a sharp boning knife, remove the skin from right over your line. If you like rind on your bacon, then by all means, leave it in place. Now, we've weighed this. This is approaching four kilos of meat, but just over three and a half kilos of meat. It's rather too large, in fact, to go into our fridge in one piece. So I'm going to cure this in two halves. We need 75 grams of cure, roughly, per kilo of meat. So we'll call this 300 grams of cure to a four kilo joint. In terms of time, you measure the thickest part of your meat, the very thickest part. And as a rule of thumb, you cure your meat for two days plus one extra day for each half inch of thickness, or 13 millimeters if you prefer. So, the thickest part of this is about two and a half inches thick. So I'm going to cure this meat for seven days. The very first thing I have to do is cut it in half so it'll fit widthwise in boxes in the fridge. So for these kind of jobs, a decent sharp butchery knife is helpful. And there we have it. That's our loin of pork into two manageable pieces. We cure our bacon in these clip top boxes. Using the dry cure method, what you're going to find is that when you've put the cure on the bacon, it will draw moisture out of the meat. So Whatever you put your bacon in needs to be able to hold that moisture or it'll be dripping all over the inside of your fridge or what have you. You can just use a heavy plastic bag with a clip to make sure it's fully secure. But you're going to want to open it every day because we're going to drain off the moisture and add more cure each day. So I find this is the most convenient method. Again, to take our half line, 
put it in the box. And this is hands on, so I like my cure in a bowl where I can get hold of it. And we're going to put 85% of the cure on the flesh side and just 15% on the back, on the skin side of the meat. And that's because it's hard for the cure to penetrate the skin, much easier for it to penetrate the flesh. So we take a good handful and we sprinkle all over the flesh side. Then we get hands on and as you can see there's little crannies in the meat and we need to get the cure right into those crannies. See here? Look at that big flap of meat. We need to pick up a pinch more cure and get it right in underneath rubbed onto that because if we don't it will penetrate the little flap of meat on top but it'll never get to the meat underneath. So we want to be putting cure all over and almost with our hands you can feel there look you can feel it's loose so you sprinkle more cure into the loose bits rub it in well and within a few seconds already you can see that cure is darkening and it's darkening because it's drawing moisture from the meat as it penetrates we need to add cure to both ends same principles apply, any little cracks need to have lots of cure rubbed into them. You can see on this side again, look, little gaps there where the fat is and you want to be able to get cure into that. So plenty of cure all over the ends, rub it in well. We're then going to turn this over so that it sits flesh side down. Before I do that, what I'm going to do is lift the meat and sprinkle cure all over the base. And then cover this again. You can see how that cure is already soaking in. Cover it so it's almost opaque with a lighter coloured cure. Pat it in, rub it into every crack. You can actually see the cracks as you pat it. And turn it over. Then we're going to put a smaller amount onto the skin side. Rub it in well and again you can see it darken as it draws out the moisture. Now that's the initial cure on the meat. We'll pop on the lid, clip it in place. We will put that into our outdoor fridge. We're lucky enough to have an extra fridge. If you haven't, I'll make a man suggestion for you. You know that drawer at the bottom of the fridge that has no apparent purpose for men? I believe women refer to something called salad. I'm not actually sure what that is. But that drawer makes a cracking little bacon curing cabinet. So empty out whatever rubbish is in that drawer at the bottom of your fridge, if you're tight for fridge space, and cure your bacon in that. I'm going to take this outside now, and we'll show it to you resting in the fridge. So this is our outdoor fridge. And as you can see, we picked those boxes because they fill the shelves, or as near as, so they're the ideal size for maximising the available space for curing meat. We also use this fridge for resting any other butchery that we're doing prior to freezing or processing. Now if you haven't got an exterior fridge or spare space in your interior fridge, can I suggest a cool box, put your meat in a bag or your meat in a box like this that fits inside one of those cool boxes and put a few frozen freezer packs in your cool box. Only a couple of seconds has passed for you, but for us that's been a day. And some really interesting stuff is going on inside this box. So come on over and have a look. 
and we'll do this each day. You won't have to look at me every day, but each day I'm going to give you a little look at what's going on in that box and you can see the bacon start to develop. And once we've had a look, I'm going to pop some more cure on and we'll carry on with the process. Take a look in this box. All this brown stuff, you can see, is liquid that has been drawn out of the pork loin by the salt cure. And what we have to do each day is get rid of that liquid and add more cure to draw out yet more liquid. That's the process of dry curing. Hold on, obviously, to your bacon and pour away all that liquid. Having poured away the liquid, we need to top up the cure. Now you'll notice if you look at this, now this is the skin side, the cure still looks quite good. We'll add it on a little bit more just to make sure it's fully covered, but it hasn't gone down very much on the skin side. What we do though, when we turn it over, can you see the colour change on that meat? and the fact you can't see almost any dry powder. So what we have to do, just as we did in the initial cure, we cover the meat in the dry cure, same as before, we're working it into, you see there's little cracks, working the cure into those cracks and ensuring that the whole of the flesh side of the meat is covered in cure and again a bit of attention to the ends making sure those ends fully covered in cure. What we will do then is put the lid back on pop that back in the fridge for another 24 hours. Here we are after three full days of cure. There is still a reasonable amount of liquid coming off, as you can see, but it is a thicker liquid because the cure is not being diluted so much by large amounts of liquid, and there's less of it. And this is because obviously in the first two days, the bulk of the available liquid has been drawn off. So, as we've done before, Pour off all the liberated liquid. Now you can see there, and I think that's quite significant, that there is cure left underneath the meat. And that means that there isn't enough moisture in the meat to require and use up all the cure. So by day three, we're almost getting on top of the curing process. For me, this starts to look almost like a well-aged steak at this point. But we will do what we've done before. We'll top up the cure and we'll work it well into every nook and cranny and make sure we're getting both ends. But we're getting on top of the curing process now. So here we are at day five of the process. Feels like a grand unveiling. What I want to show you now is there is almost no liquid coming out of the meat and there is still curing salt sat on top of the meat. So there's no point in topping up the cure today. We're almost at the end of the curing process. We'll give it another day, maybe two days to finish the curing and then we'll be on to washing and drying the meat. This is the bacon after curing in the dry cure for the allotted amount of time. As you can see, the colour has changed considerably and the colour will vary according to the ingredients of your cure. So because I'm using Muscovado sugar, which is a dark raw cane sugar, some of that dark brown colour is absorbed into the meat. Now, you can see that there is still lumps of cure on the surface of the meat. 
I need to rinse that off under a tap and then we will submerge the bacon in clean water for two hours, change the water and leave it for another hour. And that will get rid of any extra cure beyond what was needed for the curing process. Let's do that now. And that is our aged dry cure bacon in clean water, just soaking away any excess salt that's sat on the surface of the meter in those little folds. That's all we're doing. It won't affect the curing of the bacon at all. And you can see, I think, I hope, forgive the gloves, I was in the workshop yesterday and my hands are stained and I don't want that getting on the bacon. You can see, I hope, that the colour is now a little bit more bacon-like. It's still a darker colour, but with the excess surface cure washed off, we're getting to a more appetising colour, perhaps, which will change again after smoking and after slicing. So I'll keep the rinse going. Two hours, change the water, leave it for another hour, and then we'll come back to it. After two hours, you can see that that water that the meat is resting in has taken on a brownish colour. That's any excess salts and sugars dissolving away from the surface of the meat and just leaving the cured meat behind. So I'm going to change that water now and I'll pop it back into clean water for one more hour. Our curing is now complete. It's taken seven days because according to our formula we need two days of curing plus an extra day for every half inch of meat. We had two and a half inches of meat so an extra five days. And our meat, now that we've rinsed it twice, looks like this. It's a lovely brown colour. It's not fluorescent pink because we're not using artificial food colourings. And we have used a dark brown sugar. And that dark brown sugar has obviously coloured the meat. Now the next stage in the process is to hang this meat in a cool place for 48 hours to allow something called the pellicle to form. The pellicle is a sort of sticky membrane that covers the meat. And in order to do that, we use butcher's hooks. You may find it helpful to start a hole with a skewer if you've left the rind on your bacon, because that can be quite a tough thing to pierce. Um, once I've got a butcher's hook in, I hang it from a bar in a clean white five gallon bucket. That will have a lid put on just to keep out any dust or muck or what have you and we'll leave that in a dark unheated outbuilding for two days and then we have a decision to make. If we wanted unsmoked bacon at that point after the two day hang it's what's called green bacon which is unsmoked bacon and you can slice it and enjoy it. We're going to smoke ours so after the two days, it'll go into the smoker. And we'll look at that in the next video. That's it for the curing process. So that's the end of part two of Home Cured Bacon. If you're enjoying this kind of content, please give us a thumbs up. Leave us a comment, tell us other things you'd like to see in the future. And if you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification icon, you can be sure of hearing as soon as we post part three, in which we'll look at our homemade smoker and how to smoke bacon. I'm going to get these into the outbuilding. You have a wonderful day and we'll talk soon.